Hey guys, Wilberfast here. I know it's been quite some time since my last video, or indeed blog post or anything like that. I've got a whole collection of these time lapses that I've done at various game jams that I haven't gotten around to posting online. So this is a, a sort of montage of various different jams and projects I've worked on recently. This one here is my second OpenFL game, or actually technically my first OpenFL game or my second Hacks game. The first I started building for the Retro No Future contest, but unfortunately right in the middle of development they migrated from NME to OpenFL, changed various function names and so on, and actually took the documentation offline, so that rather did stall the progress of the project. I did release it later, it's currently on Newgrounds, making a lot of people angry because rather than being a fun arcadey game, it's a sort of wanky, artistic, uh, not game, which I don't think that audience particularly appreciates. So this was the second game, made not with the NME, which is the sort of old version of OpenFL, made with OpenFL, which is the new one. Thankfully now the documentation is back up, um, a lot better than it was before, in, in fact, with more examples and so on. OpenFL is, is quite pleasant to use. Unlike something like Love2D, there is no direct drawing to the screen. So instead of uh, saying, I want at this particular moment in time to draw a square at this particular point or to draw a, a bitmap or something like that, you attach sprites to this sort of scene graph. I'm sure that's more intuitive for certain people. It takes a lot of getting used to. Those who are comfortable with Flash will find it very familiar because in fact hacks, the syntax of hacks, which is a strange language made by French people and capable of compiling to just about any language imaginable, C++, Java, JavaScript, whatever. Hacks uh, has a syntax which is almost identical to ActionScript 3, apparently. I haven't actually used Flash or ActionScript 3, but apparently Hacks is very much like ActionScript, and OpenFL is very much like Flash. You can always port a Flash game to OpenFL. OpenFL can compile to all kinds of different uh, platforms. So you can make an OpenFL game, and you can directly uh, compile an Android version, an iOS version, an HTML5 version, a Flash version, obviously, and also native desktop versions. Uh, notable games made with OpenFL or NME, depending on when they were made, are Papers, Please and Rimmed Capsule, just sort of minimalist space station management game. Although I appreciate the cross-platform support, I do prefer for rapid prototyping something like HTML5 or Love2D, simply because being able to deal with your own drawing, your own draw calls at any time, rather than having to build and maintain a scene graph I just find it's much more direct, it's less high level, there are less things that can go wrong. You'll often end up with an add child command that will null pointer exception or something like that because you've forgotten to add it to the root node or any number of things could go wrong. Hacks is also sort of statically typed or rather like C sharp you can have a choice of either fixing the type of your variables by hand the compiler can also figure out some of the types. I think that's called type inference. But you do need to declare your structures before you use them. Unlike in something like JavaScript or Lua, which is what Love2D uses, JavaScript for HTML5, obviously, where at any time you can just say, all my objects are tables, so all my game objects, I can just add a variable at any time, and I can check the value of a variable, which may or may not even exist. And that's something I've really been missing ever since Game Maker, really, in, in C, C++ and so on. I have to declare that variable, I have to cast things in order to check for it and so on. That said, it's a small price to pay for the platform support that you're getting. And there are also some very nice things in terms of interaction. You know, I was just fiddling around with a hex-based game the other day, hex tiles. Doing uh, hit calculations for a hex-based grid is a little bit tricky. But with OpenFL, you can just add your hex base tiles to the scene graph and get, you know, like mouse enter, mouse click events very easily, rather than having to do your own coordinate calculations. So that is kind of nice. Now, this particular game that we're looking at was made for the Ludum Dare 10 Seconds. Uh, 10 Seconds, not a theme I'm particularly uh, enthusiastic about, but never mind. There were a lot of people talking about doing tower defense games for that particular Ludum Dare, 
So I decided, how about a tower defense game where you just have to survive for 10 seconds? And what you do is you have control over that 10 second timeline, so you can kind of scrub backwards and forwards, and you can place your units at any point in this timeline, your, your, your towers essentially. You can place bombs, you can say I want a bomb to appear at exactly 3 seconds, um, because I know that after 3 seconds the enemies will have arrived here and I can blow them up, or you know, I can place reinforcements behind their lines to kind of surround them. It was a very interesting experience from the point of view of it being a very interface heavy game. So th there were a lot of kind of contextual menus opening up, like I click on a placement, I want to be able to remove that, that unit that I've put down, that tower, or sell it, I want to be able to pick it up and move it around, either in space or in time. Uh, and OpenFL is actually really good for that kind of stuff. you got the little actuate library, which is another kind of nice thing, where you can say, listen, I want this to move over three seconds to here, with like an easing in or an easing out, or kind of like a bounce at the end. And that's just, you know, one line of code. Whereas in Love2D, you'd have to do it all by hand. I mean, you could do it exactly the way you wanted it, but you couldn't do it quite so quickly. So. I think it is very much a case of getting used to the Flash-like uh, programming interface, and I think when I am a bit more used to that, it will be a lot quicker to, to use. You know, I'm just too used to things like SDL or SFML or OpenGL, or even, you know, LWJGL, which is just OpenGL for Java. Uh, all these things are direct draw, and even libjdx is direct draw. Uh, with regard to libgdx, that's another library that promises uh, cross-platform support, uh, you know, to Android and web and whatever, using, I think, Google's cross-compiler to compile from Java to JavaScript. I don't like libgdx very much at all. It suffers from that Java curse of overuse of object-oriented paradigms. You know, you've got new this, new that, new this or that. It's horrible. I really don't like it. But, you know, if that floats your boat, if you're into Java, if you're into object-oriented stuff, then, then cool, you know, go for it. Uh, that could be a really good library for you. I'll put a link to that as well. You might be wondering, since I've never published a game made with libgdx, uh, what point did I give it a try? And actually, it was during a mini Ludum Dare on the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, obviously mini, mini Ludum Dare number 42. We made a little hitchhiking game with libgdx. And I think the reason it wasn't published, and I suppose the reason the GDX did disappoint me somewhat, was because we had serious trouble getting good performance. Now, I'm not one to complain about Java's speed. I think if it's used properly, it can be reasonably quick. The trouble is, I think, with the whole paradigm, with the whole philosophy of Java, is everything needs to be safe. And to be safe, things need to be hidden. And when you start hiding things, uh, people will often be unable to choose the option that's the quickest, and as a result you end up doing things which are actually implemented by a whole load of crazy logic you didn't need, because you've not been allowed to get to the point and do it the simplest possible way, because nobody trusts you. And, and that's, I suppose, the thing that probably bothers people the most about Java. Not the speed or performance in general, it's just the lack of trust that the application programming interface programmer gives to the, the programmer actually using that interface. So the game we made uh, had you essentially hitchhiking from one end of the galaxy to the other. You click on the map, uh, throw out this little thumb, and the thumb would catch hold of a, a ship and drag you onto the ship, and you'd be able to get from one ship to the other in order to cross the map. Very simple game. It worked reasonably well. It was quite pretty, but uh, again, some serious lag which we just couldn't get rid of. Certainly problems with large text sizes. So I'd like to hear some other opinions on libgdx but I'm not a fan of it personally. One thing I was able to do uh, with this project was to use Tiled, the map editor, which I'd used before for Hugly, the game with the killer teddy bears. And I've used it for a third project as well. It was made for the Geekopolis Game Jam. The theme here was parallel realities, I believe. So what I made was a sort of Sokoban clone, only each time you move, your character splits into four different characters for each four directions. The idea being all the choices that you didn't make are represented at the same time as the choice that you did make. So the difficulty of the game comes not so much from the puzzles themselves 
as from your inability to see what the heck is going on in front of you. So that was great fun to make, but it didn't win the competition, unfortunately. Once again, this was made with Love2D, which I keep coming back to, but then I do like Love2D for rapid prototyping. Last but not least, we have yet another kind of direct draw uh, type library, which is processing. A processing I used during this strange game jam at a computer-human interaction in Paris. I went to a workshop there where there was a small game jam that was organized, which is very interesting. A lot of hardware involved. Uh, we had an Arduino heartbeat monitor, which we were using to get heartbeat data and control a game using that. We went through multiple iterations trying to build a game controlled with a heart rate sensor and ended up with a sort of following the leader type experience where one player would set the heart rate and the other player would try to match it. Unfortunately, it's extremely difficult to accurately control your heart rate. And so despite our process of iteration being good, I think we started from an initial idea that was quite bad. The game ended up being a little bit of a gimmick. Essentially what I learned from that is you really want the game, if you're using weird physical devices, to be outside of the screen. You don't just want to be using those physical devices as a novelty controller, especially if they don't work particularly well, and in our case they really didn't. We tried to shorten the wires to make them a little bit less tangled and annoying, and unfortunately during the welding they were broken, so that didn't work out particularly well. But still, it was an interesting experience with processing Arduino heartbeat sensors. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks very much for listening, and I'll see all you guys next time. Okay.